Welcome back to the 2018 THDP 203 World Cup of Web Features. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought I should just let you carry on. That was quite good. So in the previous episode, we, we looked at eight features, and we whittled them down to our favorite, like one of them. Of those eight features, yeah. Of those eight features. And if you haven't seen that video, then you should. Yeah, it, <laughs> this, this will maybe make more sense. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, it was scroll snap. Yeah, was our favorite one. We don't. I'm gonna um, repeat what who scroll snap won against, but no. <laughs> but we're gonna take a look at the next feature, uh, and I would like to talk about uh, async clipboard. It probably does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? It is. Well, do you remember clipboard? Remember doing this? Um, oh, exec command. That is some API design straight out of hell. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, and you would have to, if you want to copy some text, you would have to create an input element, because that's where you could do the focus yeah. and selecting properly. Let All alone this setting, setting markers in the DOM, text selection markers, which gets even worse. Which, which is horrible. You do copy. You've changed focus. You've changed selection. This is very destructive things. And for support a page to be was doing. iffy. Then you had like your fallback Flash plugin until Ooh. Flash support got, yeah, horrible. Ah. So this is this is it. It's async. So it's uh, for large content. It's less likely yeah. to uh, be blocking uh, on the main yeah. thread, which is great. But I think the the main sell here is isn't that nice. Look it's at that. so nice. Isn't that nice? And I'm guessing there is not just write text and read text, but there's also going to be files and images. And because you know screenshots on many yes. operating systems just go onto the clipboard first. Yeah, potentially in many formats. So that bit is not there yet. Yeah. That's something that's that's it's just text for now. Still um, winning already. But absolutely, absolutely winning. Um, so that brings us on to the next what you want to talk one, about. which is typed OM. That's typed a Houdini. On. That's typed OM. That's that's a Houdini bit. So um, it's actually one of the the lower, almost less exciting APIs of Houdini. You're that, really selling it. Yeah. Good. That it's very necessary, though, to make all the other ones happen. And it's actually addressing a huge pain point, I think, of many developers, because okay. it gives types to CSS stylings. OK. So um, you might know get computer styles or just uh, the dot style property on an element. Yep, yep, yep. And there's now the typed versions, which are either element.computerStyleMap or the attribute style map. OK. And so now we have a style map. So what does it actually mean? A style map basically has getters oh. and gives you separate number values and their units. So now you don't need to do string concatenation and like some weird splitting or all these different things to figure out what is the actual numeric value. Right. Much easier to do math with, which you sometimes have to do, or just um, analyze them and you know figure certain things well, out. Well, before you, I really like what they've done here. So we've got unit uh, px, which is nice and short. It's, mm -hmm. it's what you write in CSS to have yeah. that. And then here we have percent. Uh, yeah, I don't remember why, but there was a reason. There was a reason. OK, that's good. That's good. Um, it actually goes further than that, because you can also create these types this way. So you can okay. you now have a, basically a small uh, part of the CSS parser exposed, and that you can just put in the string, and it gives you back that kind of typing. You can create them yourselves and then set them this way. But even more excitingly, uh, you have add and subtract on these. You can actually do math. Oh, so you in the same way the calc works. In yeah, so this actually, right. if it's the same type, the same unit length, it will just coalesce. If you have different, like here I'm adding 5% to 10 pixels, it will actually give you a proper arithmetic tree. So you can do all these analysis or like reorder them, all these things you sometimes want to do without having to re-implement a CSS parser. OK. Um, I'm, I'm feeling that. I might know what has won uh, maybe. here. Maybe. Um, Let's go back to the truth. I don't remember what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so exciting. <laughs> you can't remember it even 30 seconds later or whatever it was. Um, I, I just I think fair, clipboard is good. Yeah. It's, it's not that often that you need type to M directly. You need them for yeah. lots of the Odinia APIs. And if you need type to M, it is so huge to have it. Yes. Um, then again, you don't need. Clipboard that often as well, I guess, unless in certain circumstances. So um, yeah, I'm going to go with TypeDown. OK, OK, uh, I agree. So async clipboard, it's a big improvement to what we had. <laughs> but there's just a lot going on in TypeDown, isn't there? It, it feels like it wins just for being a bigger feature. It's definitely something I would have loved in the past, like even yeah. just small parts of that. I, yep. I love when I get excited. And there were it's jingling. <laughs> <laughs> and there were some experiments where they had like animation-heavy sites. Um, mm. And they basically rewrote them with typed them and actually got 
eighty percent faster. Eight, it's an extreme case. It's a big case. number. That's a that's a big number. I, I I'm going to put it through. That goes through. Um, right. Next, you know, steady on because the next feature is update via cache. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is a service worker feature. I'm not surprised. Uh, what happened? We had we ran into this problem where um, we were checking for updates on the service worker using the HTTP cache, mm -hmm. as things normally happen everywhere for everything else. Oh, that cache. That okay. cache. The HTTP cache. Uh, but uh, we would always time things out after 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, if it was over 24 hours old, we would go yeah. to the network regardless of what was in yeah. the cache, ignoring the caching headers. Um, a lot of developers still had a lot of issues with that because they didn't have control over the the headers for like one particular JavaScript file, like the service worker. Yeah, GitHub Pages I think is a good example where you don't have control over your headers. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah they have a default cache of like ten minutes or ten something minutes. random. Yeah. yeah. So we introduced update via cache where you can tell the service worker uh, what to go to the HTTP cache for, what to ignore. So for the service, you go, you tell the browser whether to respect the HTTP cache for the service worker file specifically. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you, you update via cache all, which was the old default. Mm. Uh, it's not the default anymore. Uh, there's imports, which is saying, don't go to the cache for the main service worker file, but anything it imports, you can go to the In cache for. Oh, that's cool. That's the new default. Or you can say, ignore the cache for everything, uh, which all is right. that. That's, that's my feature. My feature. All right. Yep. What was my feature? Desktop PWAs. So I have no oh. code samples, because it's, once again, something that doesn't really change the way you write code or gives yeah. you any new capabilities. But it's basically the whole install to home screen, but on desktop. Make it its own window. Make it its own button in the launcher or in the start menu or whatever you have nowadays. Yep. Um, and we Edge has it kind of with allowing you to submit PWA to the store. Yeah, they were ahead of everyone in doing it. But you still couldn't ex you know, just install something from Edge to your desktop. That wasn't right. possible. It was okay. only you had to submit it to the store. Had to get approved, I think. Oh, okay. And then I got in there. So now with Chrome on Chrome OS and on Windows, and I think on Mac behind the flag. Yeah, that's behind the flag. Yeah. Um, you can legit open the menu and say, install this. And then it get, gets into the launcher with its own window, its own icon, its own uh, command tab, spot, and all these things. So becoming a proper application on your desktop. It's kind of replacing Electron for a lot of simple, yeah. simpler cases. Um, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, OK, so this. Oh, yeah, it's this is a difficult one because what when I talk about update via cache, the big news there is that we changed the default. Yeah. It's not a new feature. It's a change. Yeah. So mm, shaky ground. Desktop PWAs, <laughs> it's not a developer-facing feature. Well, yeah. it kind of is because it's something you can talk about. My app can yeah. run on desktop. It's not even on all operating systems. Yeah, it's, this, this is a weak round. There are two things that are actually have been really well received. I think update via cache solves. Oh, really? So yeah. I was going to say, like, I think desktop PWAs, it's, it's such a major thing. It's something that like, it, it's moving the web into native space. I guess, I, I think, I guess you're actually right. It just doesn't feel as real to me yet. Because there's no direct APIs for it. Apart yeah, and from also there's no install screen. banner, I think, on desktop. It doesn't prompt you to do it. So you I need think to set up some subtle. JavaScript to have yeah. a button for it. Um, I'm fine I, with letting desktop, desktop people do base through. It's, OK. It's, well, I find in these sort of things that I, I feel like you've done me a favor by siding with me, which is weird because it's against the service worker feature. Um, you set yourself up, mate. I did, didn't I? And I worry that I now owe you one maybe in a later round. I'll, I'll, yeah. is... I'll, I'll call in that favor when I need it. OK, so that moves uh, desktop PWAs into uh, the next round, round. Into round two. Which So type to M desktop PWAs. Type to M. <sighs> I'm oh, really oh, torn oh. about this <sighs> one. The more, yeah, actually, the more I think about it, you well, now type to M. <laughs> because I, it doesn't allow me to write better code. Like desktop PWAs don't give me Necessary new capabilities. I'm not. They, they don't make your life easier as a web developer. Yeah. They they might make it easier to like uh, get more work because you're because you're able to do things that are more like native apps. And also, I but feel like lots of other features are still missing to make most of the things I do want to have in a separate app actually possible in a web app. File access is one of the main things that comes to mind. So many apps I would like to have as a proper app are still not possible on the web. So the the exceptions would be like yeah, WhatsApp web. Can I can install? I guess be a PWA. But I'm also quite not too sad about that being a tab. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are going to be screaming at the screen right now. Sure, 
Um, I mean, they always but do. <laughs> <laughs> it is YouTube after all. Uh, go nuts in the comments. OK, so next up, as you may have seen on the screen there, Bit, I actually find this really difficult to read because I, I kind of go bitmap pre-rend, <laughs> bitmap pre-render, oh, Rurururur. bitmap pre-renderer. Okay, it's bitmap pre-renderer. Bitmap pre-renderer. Yeah, check it out. Look at this. Um, but it says bitmap renderer here. No, it. <laughs> I'm now wondering if I. I think it's bitmap renderer, not bit, bitmap pre-renderer, because I think. It is bitmap renderer, not bitmap pre-renderer. Yes, okay, it, it, yes. See, it's difficult to read. Like, <laughs> okay. So it jingles when I get angry as well. <laughs> it's bitmap renderer. Of course it's bitmap renderer. Right, here it is. Create a canvas, but get context. Ooh. Ooh, it's a new get, get context type. It's a new context type. Uh, and what you can do with this is you can uh, you create an image bitmap, which is an existing feature. Mm -hmm. and Separate then feature, nothing to do with this. You can transfer it onto the canvas. So it's just a fast path for basic canvas draw image. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's like, like blitting. I'm, I'm guessing this is super fast under the hood, where there's like all the other layers are skipped. It's, it, it's a little bit faster. Uh, it is very efficient on memory. Because this is, a, this is transfer. Yeah. Like this image object is now. Oh. Yeah, it's been transferred in the same way as if you were crossing it over to a so, worker. It's, so it's, the, the it's image, the, the data buffer is now neutered, as it's, it's called. Neutered, exactly. Great. Um, and, and, and that, th that that's it, yeah. Game engines are going to be happy. All right. Yeah. Uh, going up against the bitmap pre-render uh, yeah. is weblogs. Oh. I have many fields, both good and bad, about weblogs. Oh, interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the, at the API. Basically, um, sometimes you have a resource that might be shared between multiple workers or even multiple tabs of your web app yes. via IDB or something else that is shared across your origin, the service locker, for example. Yes. Um, yeah. And so you have some code, and it does something. You don't need to lock. And when you need to lock, you request a lock by a name. It's just a string name. And then an async function will get invoked with a lock once you have that lock. And then you run your code. Oh, because that might not be straight away because something else yeah. has got a lock. Right. And okay, then okay. Um, once that async function is done running, the lock will be released, and you can continue normally. And there is also a concept of shared locks and exclusive locks. Shared locks, if you request a shared lock, and you can get it if there's only other shared locks. Right. If you request an exclusive one, you have to wait until there's no other locks, and you will get an exclusive lock. Because shared locks are fine if lots of things are reading from yeah. something. So exclusive lock is for writing. I like I that I went with shared and exclusive, though, because there's multiple patterns, not just the read-write pattern. OK. Right? okay. So, um, because sometimes you might be reading and writing, but on um, disjoint parts of an array. Right? Okay. So that ah, would, would right. also work. Um, yes. Okay. So yeah. So this is something that uh, lots of people have requested. Um, I think the more I think about it, the more I think it's actually necessary. I think there's also a lot to be done without this, and instead of using the actor pattern where you have one designated thread, but that's a different story. Um, yeah. But this, uh, I, why have you done underscores? This is not very. Because I copy pasted it from MDN. Good excuse. <laughs> that's a good excuse. That's a good way out of it because I, I dislike that in JavaScript. It's not like any of our APIs. Right. I mean, it feels to me like Weblox is just a more. It probably has, level, has more usage. on average more use cases than the bitmap render. I think bitmap render is kind of niche for probably game engines, probably some image processing. It, it's good if you've got an off screen canvas and you want to like, yeah. transfer across. But uh, yeah, let's should we put Weblox. Let's through? declare Weblox the winner of round number seven. Round number Her. seven. OK. All right, so Weblox is through to the next round. Uh, what, are we, what are we going to look at now? Uh, I want to talk about uh, oh. re reach, reach a policy. <laughs> well, I feel, OK, it's the font again. This is feature policy. Lots of buzz around feature policies at CDS. Yes, there was. Um, so here's basically how it works. This is a header. Uh, and you can serve this on your page. And it's essentially, it, it's like CSP. It's like yeah, CSP for features. features. Exactly. So here I'm saying, this page may not use geolocation. It's so you're declining yourself access to the geolocation API, yeah. which is good because that means when somebody evil injects JavaScript code, they can't do these things. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and you can also specify it for an iframe. So not oh, a header. Cool. You're saying this iframe may not use geolocation, and there's lots of features. Great for, for ads, it. I would presume. Uh, yes, exactly. For, yeah, 
you, you probably want to put quite a lot of this on <laughs> if you really want to restrict what if you've got me. And there's a massive set of feature policies, right? Like for like if your images are too big for this. So that one, yes, that is one, but that's an experimental one that's not mm. released. Uh, the ones that are released is autoplay, camera, document domain, stopping that, which I quite mm. like because that might come with performance benefits later in the ah, line. okay. EME, full screen, geolocation, obviously, uh, the microphone, MIDI, payments stuff, VR. Uh, I've written speaker here. Can't remember what that is. Now. <laughs> so, uh, synchronous XHR as well. So oh, sync yeah, that's, that. that's all good stuff. All right. Absolutely, because yeah, that's something you would definitely want to stop. And I think the plan in the future is like if you opt out on, of a certain subset of features, you actually get. A f there could be the option to enable a faster path in the browser because if you can opt out of legacy stuff, the browser knows, yes. oh, don't need the legacy stuff. I can be faster. Like uh, enable certain optimizations potentially in the future. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, right. Next. What, what have you got? Coming up is CSS Paint API. Um, oh, yeah. I would, okay. I would forward people to my CDS talk. But uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah um, but um, maybe that's it's a 50 minute video if you want to see the unedited version. Yes, so, you had a lot of um, okay, things went wrong for you. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and let's anyway, let's we'll get, get the quick on. version of CSS Paint API. Basically, it allows you to define your own paint routine whenever CSS expects an image. So just before the squircle is. Is the point where your talk failed at CDS? Yes. Where you, where you yes. had a ca catastrophic laptop meltdown. I did. And you've, yet you've brought it up here. Yes. This, this is just... I, I wanted to absolve the Squircle from the curse that is crashing. Understood. understood. Sorry, I interrupted. Um, yes, yeah, so a Squircle is basically a square that is mathematically closer to a circle. Then, and yes. it's, it's a way to paint a rectangle with rounded corners. But it looks a bit more natural than how rounded corners happen. For example, yeah. and, and browsers can do that. You have border radius. And if you don't like how it looks, then you're kind of screwed. And yes. now with CSS Paint, you can basically hook into the actual paint part of the rendering pipeline and define your own paint routine. So here, right. I basically load a module, which is a JavaScript file, into the paint worklet, and I use a name. And then in that file, I can define the paint routine and basically get the same context like a canvas right? and just okay. define what, what, what I'm going to draw. And you get the geometry, which is going to be telling you stuff like how big is the element, the properties, what are the styles on this element. And you can like incorporate all of those in your JavaScript code. And the good thing is that in the very near future, this code is going to run off the main thread, basically not costing you any main thread budgets that you, oh. where you only have like 60 milliseconds per frame. OK. Because previously, if you used canvas, it could end up costing you your frame budget. But is it on main thread now? Currently, it is. Okay, but okay, the, like the, the feature of worklets in all Houdini is that they're migratable. So whenever we think it's feasible to move it to a different thread, we can, we can without you having to change your code. OK, OK, right. So this allows you to reduce the DOM and stuff. Right. It's, I, so I guess we should have a think about those features. Um, this it, is a tough one. Is it? I, I think. Was, I was going to go straight in with. CSS Paint API. Yeah, it's I was going to lean towards feature policy. Oh, but it's, no. But to be, to be honest, that's mostly because of the projected future and not of what it gives you right now. Because right now, it's mostly a, development, a, de a debugging slash development feature, like opting out of features. But I have the hope that it is our way out of supporting legacy stuff for long amounts of time. Well, document.domain, that's, yeah. that, that's one of those. And I think if feature policy today, like it said, you put this combination of things in, this stuff is going to be twice as fast. Yeah. Then I think I would be putting it through. Um, yeah, too, but that's not what it is today. The right? range of things that CSS Paint API sort of uh, yeah. opens up, it, it, it feels like the, I, I'm more excited about it. True. No, way. so am I. It, you know, it's a like, um, it, it, I'm more excited about what it can do today. Flutter is using it as well for their web port, for example, which they published a blog post about to do all the, the mask imaging and form morphing oh. and all these things is actually pretty impressive. The uses that I didn't necessarily think of myself. So it is quite good. So let's call I, I, CSS Paint I'm, API. I'm, I'm going to put it through. I'm going to put it through. So now we have web locks versus CSS Paint API. The CSS Paint API. Two developer features, one of them many more use cases, in my opinion, on average than the other one. Oh, which? which? I, CSS Paint I, API. Like, for me, it would be a CSS Paint API. There's more use cases there. Yeah. Um, it, it, it makes a lot of new things possible, but also makes a lot of old things much more efficient. And especially on low end devices where you're under memory constraints, it just gives you, makes more visual things possible. It, ma it feels yeah. the, gives the web a more um, high fidelity feel. Enables it's, more high fidelity UIs, I guess. And it's the first feature that's really opening up CSS. Yeah. And I can see there being more little micro libraries released with, with CSS. It's a very extensible web API in that you are now 
hooking into the actual engine. I really like WebLocks. I really do. But I, I, I think you're right. I'm going to put uh, CSS Paint API through to the next round. And that gives us an, another semi-finalist to decide as well. Yeah, now we have to decide between typed OM and CSS. So Houdini API versus Houdini API. Oh, this is unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, it was it's going to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, um, depends on how we judge them. On average, the problems that I encounter when building a web app, Paint API is more useful than TypeDOM. And both of them are currently, as far as I know, pretty much Chrome only. Um, well, TypeDOM has, has a lot of um, lower level use cases, right? Like if you were if you were trying to figure out layout stuff, this is going to become handy. Even the amount of times I've written little rubbish parses just to take those yeah. CSS values and break them out. So, so that's where I guess my, my experience differs because me the problems that type to M solves I encounter much less than the problems that Paint API solves. Mm. We should just do that for fifteen <laughs> minutes and uh, extended cut. Um, all, all, all right, let's, let's 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 find. So you would say type to M. You're, you're leaning towards type to M. Um, Let's let's go paint API. It is I I I am more interested in the tooling that's going to be built around CSS uh, paint API. Yeah, I think it's, that's a I'm really that will that's be, a really tough one. Yeah, I'm hoping there will be like an ecosystem of off the shelf modules with all the effects like a Ripple and like you know all the things that you can potentially build. Yeah, that. I, I do think that's interesting, and it also means we can oh, come up with our, uh, yeah our, our first like semi finalists we we can come up with. So, so, oh, and this this is two. I mean, CSS. I was about to say this is two good ones. You would hope at yeah. this later stage in the competition that if this would be two good ones, uh, but it definitely two is. CSS features once again. Um, I see a pattern. I think. Yeah, but, that's interesting. Um, so this is a really tough one, actually. I, I would the amount of times that I've wanted scroll snap and I've either had to implement it in JavaScript and it's been horrible. Yeah, because it's been laggy. Um, like as, as soon as things are moving, it's fast because you're on the compositor. But that initial picking up yeah. the, the touch event to starting to do the movement, it often involves like setting up a lot of layers on the compositor. And then you do pretend physics, and you have to like do touch and pointer events and mouse events. And yes, um, there's a horrible moment where the user swipes, and then because it's having to go into your code, your physic, it, it kind of there's a bit of a break before it then yeah. flings. And then you figure out this, the, the the ramp up curves and everything. And no, like I I, yeah, I agree. Scroll so like, removes so much code, and it's uh, much more cross browser than um, CSS Paint currently is. That is true, actually. Scroll Snap is around in Chrome and Safari, but there is a sort of older standard that's available in all the other browsers. So, yeah. okay, yeah, I'll give it extra points because it is something that you can use today, pretty much today, like yeah. in, in in projects. Okay, so our our, our finalist. Uh, so we are fifty percent through. We are fifty percent through. We have uh, whittled down sixteen features to one, one. and That's we will exciting. do all of that all over again with another sixteen features. <sighs> I regret doing this already. Well done, us. Yep. How do we sign this off? I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> See you next time. Is that right? Is that next okay? Next video. Next, uh, the, next on the other on the flips. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. <sighs> See you next one. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Keep getting people back every day. Why didn't we do one episode per one of these? That would have been, that would have been much better. So, anyway, so good at this. We're so good at this. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>